Hey there, this is Casey from Spectora. Uh, this is part five of my uh, training videos to try to get you guys up to date and uh, off running in Spectora. In the first couple videos, I covered um, basics of dashboards, setting up your company profile, your inspector profile, availability, services and fees, and covered all of our uh, different settings. Um, and so refer back to other parts if you would uh, like to watch those videos. But this video will be about setting up your agreements and your automated emails and text messages. Since the pieces of code that we have you use to pull information from the inspection detail so that you don't have to enter it um, every single time anymore um, are the same, I figured I'd put these two together. Um, so let's start with your automations of emails and text messages. So I have a button up here. You can also um, do the drop down menu of your name and then go to the automations area. So we have automated emails and text messages. We are um, hoping to expand our email suite here in the near future, but currently um, we have emails for uh, confirming a scheduling and rescheduling. We have um, whenever a new agreement or fee is added to the inspection, it will send out an email letting your clients and agent know that there's a new agreement to sign or a new fee to pay. The pre-inspection for the different client, clients, agent, and listing, you can have up to three reminder emails that you can customize days, hours, weeks, months ahead of time, um, or two text messages to be sent out to say, hey, there's a quick reminder, I'm stopping by your house today. Um, or doing your inspection today. Um, and so you can customize those for the client, the client's agent, and the listing agent. Um, the report ready email is important, the most important, um, besides the confirmation scheduling. Anyway, um, and you can customize it for the client and the client's agent. It's important to note that it's illegal in some states most states apparently to send the email directly to the listing agent since they didn't pay for the inspection most of the time. Um, and so uh, you can uh, send the report ready email to the client's email and the agent's email, but there is not an option to send an automated email to a listing agent. Um, I can show you in a different video how to send the um, report to the listing agent if you get in uh, permission to or are told to send it over to them. Um, but right now, report ready email is just clients and agents. Um, you can also sign up on your end to notify you when the client or the client's agent views the reports and you will get an email with the time and the date stamp. If you don't want to get that email, if your email box is already all the way full, that um, whenever they do view it, there will be a timestamp on your inspection details page right below where the report is listed that has that time and that date stamp. Um, so you can still see when they viewed it or not. We also have post-inspection um, emails and text messages, three emails or two text messages. Um, these ones are really, really important for continuing business, getting referrals, and getting um, reviews. Um, we live in a society where um, online reviews are now extremely mandatory to be successful as a business. And so I see more and more inspectors putting in these post-inspection emails and text messages, direct links to their leave me a review on Yelp or leave me a review on uh, Google My Business. And uh, so those are great to include in there. Less clicks and they have that information right at their fingertips. And then down in the email settings, you can choose whether or not you want the point of contact, so who the emails come from or who the text messages come from, um, to be sent either from each individual inspector, if you want that personal connection, or from the company in general. Um, and then this BCC is if you'd like a copy of every single automated email that goes out um, to be sent to your company's email or a secondary email um, where you can see all that good stuff for your records, you can enter that um, email there. You can customize your header um, here. You can choose custom header and you can say whatever you would like in there or our default header um, will be your logo. Um, default footer is going to be the inspector's name, um, the company, um, and this is, yep, the inspector's name, the company, the phone number, 
and the email and website. Um, cool. Then let's scroll up. Okay, now editing. So if we click into this scheduling email, you can choose to have different confirmation emails or rescheduling emails for each client, client's agent, and listing agent, depending on what you want them to say and how much information you want them to have. So if we click into the, this edit template button, we can see um, how to change it. Now this, I'm gonna go back for one second. We can click the back button here, or we can click the back button here. Um, this confirmation email, this scheduling email will go out as soon as the, you hit the save inspection button, if you're the one entering it, as soon as the online scheduler um, has an inspection confirmed. So either if you don't require confirmation, it'll go out immediately. If there is required confirmation, whenever you approve that um, confirmation request, or same thing with the inspection request form, with whenever it is confirmed as a booked inspection is when this scheduling email will go out. Um, all right, if we hit edit template and go back over here, sorry for that backtrack, um, you can change the subject line of the emails. You can change the font, you can add an image if you want. That header that I just showed you guys in the email settings will display above your um, email. Uh, so you do not need to add your logo additionally in here if you already have your logo in the header. Um, you can add hyperlinks in here if you want, bullet points, bold, all that good stuff. Okay, these curly Q brackets are pieces of code that we call placeholders. And what this is gonna do is these correspond to pieces of information in the inspection details page um, or in the scheduler when they're entering it, and it will pull that information so that you do not need to go in every single time and create a manual email. Um, so if I had just confirmed an inspection and I was your client, it would say, hi, Casey. You can also change to have it be the client's first name, the client's full name, depending on what you would like. I see a lot of people do um, the first name for the client and then the full name for the agent, more professional, something like that, or vice versa. Um, you can change this text however you would like. Um, how it would work um, to add one of the placeholders on the side of the page is say, if I wanted to on the bottom add a fee breakdown. So it would put every fee that is associated with the inspection with commas between it. So like it's showing in green, residential inspection, $300. Radon inspection, $100. If I wanted to add that into my email, I would click this E breakdown button and you'll see it just added a curly Q of brackets with the word fees in it to the bottom of my email. Now if I want it in a different place, I can control copy and I can paste it wherever I would like in the inspection, sorry, I hit it twice. Um, within the inspection, over here, excuse me, within the email, over here. Um, and so you can customize that way. And then when you're done editing, you can always hit this save email template button, um, or you should, um, and it will save your changes. All right, and um, it's important to note, if I go back into automation, I already was in it, don't know why I clicked that button. For the, you can send a text message for everything except the scheduling email um, and the agreements, added agreements or fees. You can do it for pre-inspection, the report ready email, the post inspection can all be text messages. Um, so for those text messages, it's also important to know oops, um, that there are different placeholders since things display a little bit differently between the mobile and the um, desktop. So like if you wanted to have the inspection link in there, you'll see that it has um, the inspection test link, text link, excuse me. Whereas in the email, if we had that same link, it would say inspection link um, for the email. Um, so the, the code is just slightly differently different for the text. Um, it's also important to note that these text messages are going out um, from a third party, us, we're not sending them directly, di directly to, uh, through your phone. Ooh, tongue twisters everywhere here. Um, and 
So if you would like the client or the agent to be able to respond and text you back, put something in there like, let me know if you have any questions with your phone number in here so that they know to text you back. The emails come from your emails. Text messages just work a little bit differently. Okay, so that's how to do the emails and the text messages. Now, because we use the same kind of code, if you click into settings or you can use the drop down menu of your name and then scroll down to this inspection agreements in your business tools. Oop, I didn't click it. Inspection agreements. There we go. Here are your um, pre generated agreements in here. The inspection agreement comes with, we added the agreement, uh, the radon agreement later. Um, this inspection agreement is the InterNACHI agreement that we pulled from their website. Um, so if we click into it, you can also hit the create new inspection button or create new uh, agreements button and uh, copy and paste your own in there if you would like. Um, yes, you can customize the name of the agreement up here. You can use all the tools to do hyperlinks, logos, all that good stuff, rename it. Um, and then these pieces of code that are over here are the same as in the um, emails and text messages. Um, and so you would just click one of these to add a piece of code, copy and paste it where you want. Um, with the agreements, um, we have been assured that the checkbox I agreed to sign here or that I am signing here electronically is legally binding. Um, it's like most um, acknowledging terms and conditions. Um, so it is legally binding. We hope to add uh, the ability to add initials in here soon. We are working on it, it's in development. Um, but so you would um, click into here and then click the save uh, agreement and now all of your changes have been saved. Um, and then if we click into a existing um, inspection, because it will be quicker for the purposes of this um video <laughs> if we click into it um the agreements are displayed down here at the bottom you can see this one is already signed i can hit the plus new and i can add a new inspection agreement um and then that new one will be shown down here if there is an unsigned agreement they cannot view the report at all period so if you don't mind that it's not signed and you want them to be able to view the report, you can delete that um, and not have an unsigned agreement. But if there's an outstanding unsigned agreement, they will never be able to view the report. So if we click into the agreement, we can see what it looks like. It pulled all of the um, information about the property address. We didn't have a client name in there. That's why it's fine. Um, and scroll down. And then this, by checking this box, I hereby accept terms and conditions and press submit is how your um, clients are going to sign their agreements. Cool. All right, that has been part five of my Learning Spectora video series. Um, check out the other ones, uh, past and future, um, about setting up your um, account with Spectora and getting off the ground running. All right, uh, thanks for your patience with all my tongue twisters on this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on the Techsport chat bubble.